Earth would have to be closer to the Sun. However, this would increase gravity, so Earth's orbit around the Sun would sink like Mercury, thereby cooking one side of the Earth and freezing the other, making life impossible. We've already discluded 90% of the stars in our galaxy from being possible for life. Can we make this problem any worse? You bet. Our moon exerts a gravitational pull that regulates Earth's climate by stabilizing its tilt, thereby circulating the warm and cold water of its oceans, without which we'd all be dead. Here's a fun fact. Because the moon can eclipse the sun so perfectly, we can measure the constituency of the sun, the materials and elements on its surface, by observing the pinkish arc of the chromosphere at the moment of totality. The moon fits over the sun so perfectly that it makes it possible to observe the surface of the sun. Otherwise, this would be impossible. If the moon was too big or too small, it would be impossible. Because of our vantage point from the Earth, the moon fits perfectly over the sun, the chances of which are one in a trillion. There is a large concentration of black holes, exploding stars, and deadly radiation in the center of our galaxy. This is common because there is a large concentration of stars in the center of our galaxy, making life at the galactic core impossible. Our planet is made of magnesium, iron, and oxygen, all higher elements that cannot be found at the outer reaches of our galaxy. So, there has to be a happy medium. Much like the sun, there is a habitable zone where intelligent life is possible. Here, in this very small ring, we can find our Earth, the only place in our galaxy where life can be possible, where the higher elements can be found, radiation and exploding stars and black holes are not in abundance. We exist in a universe based on rules. All of these rules have restrictions upon what would make life possible. Now, if any one of these are not met to utter perfection, life would not be plausible on Earth. As we learn more about our planet and this universe, we can begin to compile a list of essentials for life and a habitable planet. As we begin to compile this list, we can realize that the chances of these things happening by chance become increasingly small. All these factors have to be met at one place at one time in the galaxy. In an attempt to estimate the probability of attaining this combination of factors simultaneously, some researchers have developed equations assigning a conservative 1 in 10 value to each factor deemed necessary and essential for life. Every element had to be there at the right time in the right amount in the right way. When you multiply the probabilities, you come to a very shocking number. It's a number like that that you need to compare to the billions of stars out there. At face value, these probabilities are speaking. The Earth did not happen by chance. First of all, you make the assumption that life everywhere would have to be exactly like life here on Earth. Wrong. There's no reason to say that this is the only kind of atmosphere that could support life. Just because we don't have it on any of the other planets in this galaxy that we know of, and even that could be wrong, we, that doesn't mean that it couldn't possibly exist on any of these other kind of planets. Carl Sagan postulated that life could even exist on gas giants like Jupiter. There's, no, there's nothing to say that a life form can't exist in another kind of climate. We think that this is the perfect climate for life because our life evolved in this climate. We're perfectly suited to it. And as for shit like, look how great the moon fits over the sun. It's just perfect. What's that little fucking gold rim around it then, motherfucker? I think that that, you know, if it was absolutely perfect in every way, then... I would think that the, it would cover it entirely. I mean, look how pretty it is. Look how perfectly it fits. I mean, if it was slightly closer, slightly farther away, it would cover it more or it would cover it less. There's still some of the sun showing, is what I'm saying. It, it doesn't fit absolutely perfectly. Even if it did, that wouldn't mean anything. Lots of things look really purposeful because our mind sees purpose in everything. We can prove um, that the human mind sees purpose in things. That's why when you slam your foot in... That's why when you stub your toe on a table, you fucking curse the table out. Well, you probably don't. You probably say fiddlesticks or something. But when I hit my foot on a table, I curse that table out because I see purpose there. I act as if the table intended to do me harm. And all you're doing is saying that everything that happens to you or happened to create you must have been intended because you just have this primitive sense of everything having some intention. Gee, everything is just so swell. It must have been put here for me. And as for your little equation there at the end, 
there's no way to really fucking come up with a decent estimate for that. I mean, the Drake equation is basically the exact same equation. I, I believe that uh, Frank Drake's own equation placed 10,000 uh, communicative civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy alone. And this is the same math with the same factors, uh, just with different uh, interpretations of the numbers. And numbers are always fucking shaky, but let's say that you're right, and we are the only life form in the entire galaxy. It's such a cop-out to say that consciousness could only be the result of consciousness. I mean, why then are there different levels of consciousness on this planet? I mean, the earthworm is certainly conscious. It's not as conscious as we are. And we could potentially be more conscious. It's conceivable. I mean, not, not even the consciousness of every human being is the same. I mean, your consciousness, for instance, is extremely low. Whereas the consciousness of most people is pretty decent, and the consciousness of some people, some exceptional people, like uh, Stephen Hawking, Richard Dawkins, or Carl Sagan, exceptionally high. We still pretty much have all these levels of consciousness present. So how can you say that consciousness is either something that you have or you don't have when you can clearly see just by looking around on this planet that there are different levels of consciousness for different organisms and different levels of consciousness among human beings? So to say that that's something that must have been magically created instantly and at a certain level by a certain powerful being is ridiculous.